Some parts of Southern California experienced a heavy rain over the weekend. The rain led to a mudslide that trapped 20 vehicles on the highway. Heavy rains triggered a mudslide in the San Bernardino Mountains over the weekend. The mudslides stranded about 25 cars and forced the Highway 30A near Big Bear to close on Sunday. California Highway Patrol says no injuries were reported. Nearly all of the vehicles have been removed since then. Along with the receiving a huge number of cargo ships every year, the Port of Los Angeles is also the victim of millions of cyber attacks. The port's director talked about how the port is getting attacked and what's being done about it. NTD's Daniel Hall reports. The number of cyber intrusions directed at the Port of Los Angeles has doubled since the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. That's according to the port's executive director, Gene Soroka, who spoke to BBC World Services in July. The increase comes out to about 40 million attacks every month. Cyber intrusions include phishing, malware, and other attempts to breach the port's systems. In response to the increase in cyber threats, the port launched a first-of-its-kind Cyber Resilience Center in January to improve readiness. IBM operates the system, allowing both the port and outside companies involved in the supply chain to collect and share signs of threats with each other automatically. Port of Los Angeles spokesman Philip Sanfield told the Epic Times none of the cyber attacks have succeeded. The ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach remain the busiest seaports in the Western Hemisphere, processing about 40% of seaborne imports and 22% of seaborne exports nationwide each year. At its peak, a record 109 ships waited to offload cargo at the port complex in January, dropping to just under 30 by July 29th. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. Twitter's lawsuit against Elon Musk is set to go to trial this fall. A Delaware judge issued an order for the trial dates late Thursday. The judge ruled the trial will begin on October 17th, which is later than Twitter wanted. But it's also a lot earlier than the 2023 date the Musk legal team pushed for. Twitter is suing Musk to try to force him to follow through with his proposed deal to buy the social media company. Musk said he now wants to terminate their agreement, alleging Twitter breached multiple provisions in the deal. Despite the legal battle, Twitter is pushing to move forward with the process and hopes to have the agreement completed before October 24th. In California, the largest U.S. pension fund has recorded a $29 billion loss. This is the first recorded loss since the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. One of the reasons cited was unexpected changes to the market. The California Public Employees Retirement System, or CalPERS, posted a negative 6% loss on its investments for the 12-month period that ended in June. It's the first loss in over 10 years. According to Nicole Muzico, the CalPERS Chief Investment Officer, this is a unique moment in the financial markets, and we've seen a deviation from some investing fundamentals. For instance, our traditional diversification strategies were less effective than expected, as we saw both public equity and fixed income assets fall in tandem. 79% of the CalPERS total fund is made up of public market investments. According to CalPERS 13F filing, the top holders for the first quarter were Apple Incorporated, Microsoft Corporation, Amazon, Johnson & Johnson, and Berkshire Hathaway. The world's tallest tree is located in California's Redwood National Park. But visiting this incredible tree may land visitors some hefty fines. The tree named Hyperion is certified by Guinness World Records as the world's tallest living tree. But visitors should think twice about trying to go see it in person. The massive tree has faced environmental issues since hikers started visiting it in 2006. Park officials say visitors lead to erosion and trash around the tree. Now anyone who gets caught near the tree can face up to six months in jail and a $5,000 fine. The Redwood National Park is also home to the second and third largest trees, named Helios and Icarus. 
A Southern California utility company expanded its eligibility program for free, energy-efficient home appliances. NTD's Jackie Reels went to speak to one of the program leads to hear how and why the company is doing it. Gas, food, rent, and utilities for families just trying to scrape by, it can be a month-to-month -month struggle. Fortunately, one Californian company is stepping up to help out those in need. For over 20 years, SoCal Gas has had an energy savings assistance program that provides minor home repairs and replaces certain appliances in the home. Daisy Cristobal Sanchez, so, an outreach lead for the program, for explains. They're energy uh, efficient appliances that are replaced in the home. So it could be a replacement of a clothes washer. It could be the replacement of a water heater, which are some of the bigger ticketed items. We also do attic insulation. We do caulking for windows and doors. We do low flow shower heads, faucet aerators. One so-called gas customer who had applied before didn't qualify, but this time around he did. Wow, what they're doing now, I know I wouldn't have been able to do it. You know, a brand new washer, I can't afford right now. Uh, the doors, the weather stripping. While it's nice to discount home appliances to customers, there's also efficiency reasons. SoCal Gas has a commitment to provide clean, safe and reliable energy to its customers. And anytime we're using energy efficiency equipment, it's helping to lead towards that goal. Last year, the program allocated $115 million to providing new appliances. Cristobal Sanchez explained where the funds for the program come from. So these are ratepayer funded programs as authorized through the California Public Utilities Commission, which is our governing body. There is no cost to the customer and no tax liability for our customers for these services. Over the past 20 years, so-called gas says more than 1.6 million homes have enrolled into their energy savings assistance program, and those in need greatly appreciate the help. Jackie Rios, NTD News, Los Angeles. Mega Millions is no longer a sufficient name for the recent lottery jackpot. It's now in the billions. Being the second largest in the game's history, people were forming long lines to take their shot at that price last Friday in Los Angeles. While the winning ticket was purchased in Illinois, we can still hear what was on people's minds ahead of the big drawing. The giant $1.28 billion jackpot remains the nation's third largest prize. It is the result of 29 consecutive lottery drawings without anyone matching all of the game's six numbers. The last time someone hit the Mega Millions jackpot was April 15th. In Hawthorne, California, hundreds lined up Friday morning to purchase tickets at what they believe is a lucky lottery store. Right, because Blueberry Lucky Liquor Store is very lucky and I've won money here many times, so this is the place to be. You want to be here to get it and to win it. You got to be in it to win it, right? Tanner waited in line for nearly an hour after using numbers picked from a Chinese fortune cookie to fill out her tickets. This is a Bluebird liquor store. Bluebird is a symbol of the fortune and they bring the uh, lucky to people. It's a lot of energy. Yeah. The estimated $1.28 billion prize is for players who get their winnings through an annuity, paid annually over 29 years. But nearly all winners take the cash option, which for Friday's drawing is an estimated $750 million. And I got the winner! No, I got it! I got it! Lottery officials expect the prize will grow to $1.7 billion for the next drawing on Tuesday, making it the nation's largest lottery prize. Before rushing out to spend $2 on a ticket, keep in mind that the odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot are a staggering 1 in 300 million. Across the U.S., state lottery systems use lottery revenue to boost education, tourism, transportation, and much more. With the big Mega Millions jackpot, state officials are hoping increased national interest in securing the top prize will result in more funding for their own causes.